heaven? No, it's just a, a collection of shitboxes. I'm the self-proclaimed uh, shitbox collector. Um, what's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. Today, we're focusing on my friend's collection, Richard Fisher, also known as Fish. Um, we've had kind of an interesting history. Uh, yeah. Just one day, I decided to show up to Chicago and then you're like, hey, you want to shoot some cool cars? And literally, I think some of the coolest cars just showed up. Him and his crew, Risky Devil, and some other people like... And that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was, was a long time years ago. ago. Junk House, uh, I don't even know who... Oh, but anyways, it was just a bunch of people. Ten years ago, we did like a cruise around downtown Chicago. There may or may not have been a little bit of street drifting. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit, just a smidge. It was kind of cool just to see a different city. You know, I shoot in LA a lot, a lot. Yeah, that's where you live. A different backdrop, different cars, different people, you know, and that's kind of the thing is we've made lifelong friends from this kind of industry. And on top of that, we were in a video game together. So oh my God. <laughs> we spent about two weeks. Two and a half weeks in London. In London. Best trip of my life. It's fun because traveling on other people's dime, but on top of that, Need for Speed 2015, first thing you see is basically Fish and I, Ken Block, Frederick Osmo, Magnus, Magnus Walker, Bissimoto, a bunch of people. And then at the end, when you beat the game, I'm literally, we are the last thing that you see, but I'm literally the last thing you see when you beat the game. Have you beat the game? I have not. Yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> I tried playing it and I was like, I think I'm too old for this, but it was yeah. really cool to see well, how bad yeah. I am at acting. People keep, <laughs> yeah, that, and people keep texting me and showing me pictures of them like racing against me and they're like, oh, look, it's you. Um, but it, it's kind of a fun thing, you know, it's just something special. Uh, but we're actually here at your private collection. Yeah. Um, in Chicagoland. So tell me a little bit about this space. So the space was, it was kind of cool. My, you know, my father had a, uh, a small collection in Evanston, um, which is another suburb in Chicago. He was looking for a bigger spot. I had stuff parked everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean friends, garages, different dealerships. I would send a car to a shop to get worked on just so I had a place to put it. Uh, it was pretty bad. So I started looking, he started looking, and then we found this place, which was the perfect specimen. It was two units. We kind of could have our own space, and it was, it was more cost-effective to share it, I guess. So we bought it about two years ago, and it was an eyeglass repair company. And they did, like, distribution and repair and things like that. And it was just offices, and then this was all just warehouse. Blue floors, it was terrible looking. Uh, and they moved to a bigger spot, and we got lucky. So it was about six months of redoing it, floors, lights, building out the offices, and then just moved our shit in. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So did you match the cars to the floor or? I did, I did <laughs> the best I could for white floors and it was really, really cool when they were first done. Now you can see they're getting dirty and chipped up, but I, I wanted my area to look like a hospital room, like everything clean and, and lined up and as white as I could get it. Okay, so, so this area is your area, and then over there on that side is your father's. Yeah, so over there is like his workspace, and then when you cut over, you'll see like his showroom, and he's got a completely different way he, he set his place up. Um, for my place, because I had this huge upstairs that we share for storage, I needed to keep more office and more hangout area, um, but my, my space needed less work, so it was kind of our trade-off. So like where that little pipe is, that's actually on his side now where he can keep stuff, and then... This is all just storage upstairs. Okay, so let's go to the hangout area. We'll come back to the garage. There's so many cool cars I wanna talk about. Let's check that out. Oh, this is so cool. I could only imagine having a space like this. This is so cool. The only problem is the bigger the space, the more shit you can put in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this. All right, so tell me about what you have here. You have, this is like a museum piece, huh? So this car is a uh, Mark 1 GTI. It was actually like one of the first bring a trailer auction cars back in 2013 or 14. I found the original owner uh, when he, he restored it and I asked him all about the car and he said it was originally white 
because the car used to be red. So once I heard it was white originally, well, you know it had to happen. But this car's cool. It's got like, you know, built 16 valve, fully restored, full Euro interior. Um, you know, it's a little dirty right now, but it just got out of the paint booth. We're still waiting on some trim pieces and little doodads. It's cool. I Was this in your showroom at your Volkswagen dealership? Yeah. You okay. remember it probably, it was red. Yeah, I think this is a good uh, time to kind of talk about what you actually do. So while it looks like uh, Fish is a drug dealer, um, especially because he drives that S8 right there. And I mean, look at this view. This is the drug deal view here. Uh, you're not actually a drug dealer. No, no drugs, no <laughs> drugs, they scare me. You are a car dealer. I'm a car dealer, yeah. So um, kind of a family business. Uh, I run a couple locations and I got addicted to cars from a young age. So kind of like a car dealer, you know, run by enthusiast, I guess. We try and break the mold of a, a typical car dealer, but Volkswagen and Subaru is what, what I do on my side. And then just a bunch of used cars, but all this stuff is personal, unfortunately. Not only do you guys shit box collect, but you guys also drift. Yeah. Yeah. And by this, you cannot tell at all, but my two drift cars are absolutely in pieces and you know they're all getting redone right now but yeah drifting's like our main love aj's on his way here you'll see his chaser uh, that's his street car that i sold him and you'll tell that i sold it to him because it's white <laughs> um but yeah no drifting's our thing yeah and that's kind of how i got introduced to you guys you guys are really it, it, in terms of crew it's just kind of cool to have that uniform look uniform style, even though at one point it was all different cars, right? It was. Yeah, but we're hoping by next year, once all the stuff's over to go back to all red, get, get our uniform back and, you know, come back kind of better than ever. Uh, this was kind of like our break here, but AJ just moved back. You know, we all grew up a little bit, had to like get houses and families. And so we're going to try and be kids again next year, I guess. You got some artwork here on this side. Yeah, so there's usually a car parked here, but for the summer we take them out and, you know, drive them. But there's usually a car parked here, and then this is just like artwork I've had my whole life. Like that Speed Racer Mark III golf picture was like in my bedroom when I was like 12. <laughs> I love uh, this thing. It looks great. Some of these like I've stolen from previous dealerships that we owned. You know, remember the Boss car? Oh, yeah. That car's dead. Yeah. Dead and gone. Too bad. Got Tricky Dicky in the middle, my boy Nixie. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like this was just all like cubicles when we bought it. So we just did floors and build outs and this is just kind of like the hangout area. Then I have like a little office area where I try and work sometimes. Mm, nice. So this is, you know, our, the dealership's pretty far away. So I'll, I'll come here probably once or twice a week to do work out of here and- Yeah, what a nice office. Or pretend to, pretend to work. I like it. Oh, you have some, are we allowed to show this? Yeah, why not? Let's party. Oh my God. This is my other addiction, which is shoes. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, it's a problem. Yo, I don't know anything about this, but I know like th these are special, right? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I started doing this when I was like 13 years old and I, I wouldn't say I'm into it as much now, but it's kind of like, well, what do you do with them now? You know, so I, I put them on shelves. Huh. So, and some of them have like, you know, a lot of meeting and other ones are stupid. so so like i'm guessing is this one like crazy yeah so those are like oregon fours they were never actually made um they're for the oregon football team so they were given to like all the oregon football players and then i don't know how i got my hands on them but they're they're pretty rare um i got married in these so me and all my groomsmen wore jordan 11s for my wedding <laughs> So that was, awesome. it was tuxedos and Jordans. That's awesome. But like just, you know, little stuff. I went to prom in these. Um, I'm, no, actually these. They're called Crayola Air Maxes, so they're Crayola bottoms. Um, but yeah, just, just a shoe problem, really. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, <laughs> so. All right, I don't even know where to start. There's just so many crazy cars here. That's your one, one and only supercar. I rented this on Turo just to make me look cool. <laughs> And the, your drug dealer car. This one you've had actually the longest, I think? I've had this a long time. I bought this uh, in like, ooh, 2010, 11. I don't know why, I've always loved S8s. I think because of like the movie Ronin back in the day. But then I finally found a white one, which is pretty impossible. And then 
I said, how can I make it look like I'm gonna get pulled over at all times? And every time I drive this car, I 100% get pulled over and searched. Oh my God. And all they find is like a Twinkie, so. Oh. <laughs> uh, this was my grandfather's car. He was uh, in the car business and he was a, a Lincoln dealer back in the day. And this was like his, his Rolls Royce. So this was like his favorite car. It was, uh, he wasn't a car guy at all. Um, but hey, he, he wanted a stretch Lincoln town car and somehow now it's just been at my garage and we don't know who owns it. He's passed away since and nobody really wants it. So it just sits in this corner. So yeah, uh, this is my buddy Brian's car. Good friend of mine that also has too many cars. He's kind of the South side ship box collector. So I'm actually hoping he forgets about it. So I've tried to buy it now for like six, eight months. He won't sell it. So now I just don't even text him about it and hopefully he forgets and then I can buy it then. I love that it's already pretty much halfway there in that it's actually like in your literally I, I won't even let him take it out like <laughs> this will be my car hopefully <laughs> soon e46 m3 slick top low miles it's got like carbon air box but it's all like really simple this is nice this is this, one of the few oh JDM my god cars. this car is so this car I just got back like two weeks ago it's gonna get the exterior redone so don't mind, like it still has bumps and bruises. It's got a Redox kit on the way, just like all that stuff. But aside from that, it's been fully redone. This is kind of like my, my JDM Ooh, staple car. The interior is brand new now. Yeah, uh, interior is brand new. Everything's been so redone. So all of the plastic, everything is new? Yeah, I, I've got the last black set of carpets from Toyota. Oh, I hate hearing that. The last set of- I know, anything. I had to like get them from like Arizona, yeah. some you know, Toyota dealer, but. So literally the car is completely done except for the outside. Um, I just. <laughs> it's got, you know, fully built motor, but I wanted to look like OEM as possible. So everything was done in black and simple looking. It looks great. Yeah, it makes like a 800 wheel. Of course it does, SP. Sound performance, I don't know if you've heard of them. No. So they did the full restoration. Um, I mean, I don't know if you can get underneath it, but literally re-undercoated every suspension arm, powder coated, every new bushing, bolt, like it's a fully restored car. Uh, 500E. It's another drug dealer car. Another drug dealer car. Yeah. It's the, this is the car that Porsche built for Mercedes. So Mercedes kind of gave this to Porsche to like, to build and engineer in a way to keep them alive when they were about to go under. So it was a cool story car, but the story's a lot cooler than the car itself. And I don't know how long it's gonna live here. Uh, this is uh, a 964 we just got that uh, by the time this video is out, I will be owning. Whoa. It was actually my father's car. There he is. Hi. <laughs> so paint to sample or interior to sample magenta. Amazing. This yeah, is, this, this is, color is hilarious. It's the only reason. And then. It's so good. It's also uh, got a, a Whipple supercharger. <laughs> of course it does. So it's pretty fast and it's fun. This is just rowdy. This is just. I think it's the only way you can have a, a Porsche cab is with a really dumb interior and. But you drive, you cruise through downtown Chicago at night with this top down. I was going to take it last night, but I don't know why I didn't. I got a face for radio. This is my wife's car. I just parked it here because it looked cool. <laughs> this is Stevie's car that looks like burnt toast. Ah, uh, poor Stevie. So this was actually a car that I was actually going to feature. Um, this past weekend at Grid Life. Unfortunately, it caught on fire. So it's very toasty under here. It was pretty nuts too. The fire went like all the way back. Yeah, everything's all melted. I think the rear main seal went and it was just the oil fire. If you look, like all the brake lines are charred back here. Oh, Everything. what? Look at that. It got that far one. back. Yeah, like it literally went all the way. Look at this bumper. It's all charred right here. See that? No way. That sucks. Sorry, bud. Sorry. Oh man, I love the plate though, Risky Devil. Yeah, I don't, cause he stole it from me. <laughs> um, so this car is like my new favorite thing. RS America, I bought it from the original owner in Ohio. Uh, it, was, it was one owner car, this guy had two cars. He was 81 years old, he had an RS America and a 996 GT3, and that was it. Um, as you can see, when I bought it, like he drove it through the winter. Oh Never. wow. Wait, so is there any rust on it? No, no, he, he like literally sprayed it all the time. There's zero rust, it's just a little dirty. 3.8 with a Vario Ram head. He, I mean, he drove the shit out of the car and 
So we're just doing like new suspension and cleaning it up and yeah. stuff. But. This this is pretty much the rarest 964 for, for yeah. the US. And this one is slick top, no AC, no radio. So this is like one of the stripper cars from back then. But yeah, RS America, you know, and it's white, so. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Putting some KWs on it. Yeah, we're doing KWs, you know, just some updates and upgrades and then so it can get parked. A couple stupid bikes. You saw that car yesterday. Yeah, that thing is hilarious. I love it. So this car I bought out of Canada, and it's also like this guy fully restored it. You know, read that it's VR6. I, this guy went nuts. Like if you look underneath, you could eat underneath it. Um, I just had to have it. Can we check out the motor? Yeah, yeah. Wow, the interior. It's got like a hot imports night, hot import nights interior. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> like I, I said. I love that it's like clocked. Yeah, and it's all like tweed seats. Yeah. I mean, CAE shifter. Oh, this shifter looks great. I love the red like trim, the piping here. Yeah, that's all like OEM. Pretty clean, pretty crazy. So this is swapped then? Yeah, yeah, this is just usually an eight valve or 16 valve. So this is a VR6 out of like Mark III, Mark IV Golf or GTI. Um, it runs good, it's a fun little car. That's gotta be insane to drive. Yeah, R32 is bone stock, just kind of like a collector piece. Golf R, daily, uh, Mark VI race car. That was my first car ever like my first actual car. Huh. So one day I'll like redo it, but. It's on bags? Yeah, it's on bags, fully shaved and crazy interior, but. Then this is an actual race car, like a cup? Yeah, yeah, we, we built it. My father built it to race and then now it has 300 miles on it and it just gets parked there. So <laughs> pretty neat. Seems like a theme over here. Yeah, yeah, I like to park them. This is my mom's bus pickup truck thing. She has driven it never but she just loved the way it looks, so. And it looks cool. There you go. Well, we got some, this is like the 911. 911 territory. Uh, GT3 996. It's had every Bolton, KW Club Sports. Uh, 996 Turbo, I know you know about those. Yeah, yeah. I love these wheels on it. Yeah, E88s, they're kind of the jam. Uh, 996 Turbo, X50, blah, blah, blah. Kind of cool though, 996 with carbon ceramics. Oh wow, that's got to be something. Else. Pretty rare back then. Yeah, I mean, because they came out, they came with the GT2s, I think. Yeah, it came with GT2s. It came in some GT3s, but you could never really find them with turbos. But uh, when this car came along, uh, yeah, it was bad. This was my father's. This was one of our trade cars. So, built 3.2, you know, full red interior. The interior is kind of the the jam. Oh wow. It's so good. It, yeah, it's really it's red. It's so clean. This car's been all redone and, you know. There's something just so right about a red interior. White car, yeah, red white interior. Car. It's just, there's something so. Cool thing about white cars is you can always have funky interiors. Like the pink interior, you can have brown, red. White goes with everything. Yeah. 70 911S. Um, yeah, this was kind of a, a weird, a weird car. It was my. My father's, now it's my mother's, and once again, she didn't drive it, so it just sits here. Um, I drive it every once in a while, but fully restored, you know. What do you, I mean, how do you choose what to drive, like? Like, real talk, like when we, when we met up yesterday, I was like in, the, in this place, like, I don't know what to do. So I made Newman, my buddy, decide who came with me. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, it's tough. And the other thing is I got like three kids, so a lot of these cars don't get driven because I'm on dad duty. So like the 500E gets driven, some of the sedans get driven. We have another bus that's not here that I drive that all the time because that's my, that's my ice cream getter. So like after dinner, you pack in the bus and you're on the way. But yeah, you, you just, I don't know, I try and drive them all because Chicago's got like 19 months of winter every year. So you try and you know, drive them, enjoy them, and then put them away. Well, that's the thing is I, I follow you on Instagram and I see your posts. Basically, you have to winterize. Yeah, yeah. So like October, everything yeah. goes away yeah. for like six months. So right. everything gets covered. Everything gets covers, detailed. I'm really OCD about my stuff. Yeah. I think I found a, uh, another Risky Devil guy. This thing is so cool. Yeah, that car. What year is that one? Uh, it's, I have no idea. This was 
fish is, now it's yours. Yep. Yeah, he started the build, I kept it going and made it shittier. <laughs> he made it shittier but cooler looking. So yeah, this car, I traded my four-door R34 for it, and then uh, I built it, and then I drove it twice. I got coffee with it, it sucked. And then I took it to a drift event for AJ, because AJ was flying in. I just got coffee with it, it's still terrible to get coffee. Yeah, no, it's Why? garbage. Why? Because you're on the other side, so drive throughs are, are trash. That, it's, uh, it's got the full Serial 9, like, CD009 race setup in it, so it's like a tilt and unsprung clutch and some crazy flywheel. It's just, uh, you know, stop and go traffic and stuff, and not very fun. <laughs> So yeah, but we took it to a drift event so AJ could drive, like, cause he was living in Arizona at the time. So I took this and my other drift car and then AJ drove it for the event. And then I think that day I sold it to you. Uh, you had me sold on it. Yeah, yeah, so. Dude, I want one of these so bad. This is so cool. Sorry, it's very dirty. Wow. Yeah, the difference between me and AJ is he drives the shit. I want one. This is so cool. This is something special about a four door drift car, huh? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look like too much, but it's got 80-1000s, it's got a Tomei Arms Turbo, Haltech ECU. I made sure it was pretty nice before I sold it. Yeah, <laughs> that's... <laughs> yeah, I, I, just, I just like building them and finding them, and the hunt, for me, the hunt is all of it. Like, hunting and finding the car is... And like, I, I don't know, like, I don't like, like, showing off, right? And this, like, I look like an absolute douche right now, but... Uh, for me, it's just finding the car and hunting it down and finding something odd and rare. And then once I have it, I'm like, well, this is boring. I'll just sell it now. So, like this. <laughs> oh, man. Always a character. All right, so should we check out your dad's side? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the polar opposite. The polar opposite. He likes okay, colors. So, yeah, this looks like a hospital. Yeah. And that, just from this scene, looks like a, a, like a shop in Germany. Just, just, just like a corner shop. Yeah, so this car, uh, this is pretty funny. So that RX-8 there has got an LS, and he was like, what do I do with the whole drivetrain? So it's going in this, so this will be a rotary Miata. Or it already was, but it's getting redone again. I already see something I like. There's a 240Z, there's an orange 240Z. Oh, dude, there. that car is, that's really dumb. But yeah, Fulvia. This is Steve, Steve's our guy. Hi, Steve. Uh, he's, our, he's our fab guy, he is. Beautiful at his What at his the? Heart. Okay. So, whoa, this is completely not. This yeah. is like not even. Plus, we're, we're it's all divided. Oh my God, there's also a little preview of a. There's like a showroom here. Oh, and it's like dark and it's just yeah, different. It's very dramatic. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is a shop area. This is a shop area for them. They got uh, Jason, which you see over here. Hi. He's kind of the, the shop manager and the, uh, the master of all the projects. And my father's very into making sure every car is fully restored, even if it makes no sense. Like, this is gonna be an M5 wagon, and instead of just putting an engine in it, they had to redo every single arm, and like everything has to be perfect. So yeah, this is all like, this is all like M. Style. Yeah, full M5 uh, rear subframe. But you know, everything's, like every line has to be redone. They take it to the next level. It's not usually just regular swaps. Everything has to be like a, a million dollar build. Have you ever heard of the E34 M5 Electicar? No. So it's dark green with all green carpets and uh, like crazy interior. It was like one of very few. So this car is gonna be like a tribute car to that. So an E39, but wait till you see the interior. It's, it's wild. Oh, okay. This is, I'm, I, I'm sorry, but this side already, it's, it's just getting me really excited. Yeah, no, like they do way cooler shit here. I'm just all about parking them. So as you can see. <gasps> what the heck? Green carpet. Double stitch tobacco leather. Alcantara headliner. Dude, this looks like a, a pool table. <laughs> yeah. Holy wow. Bro. This is going to be so cool. Big Papa snapped. So, like, did it start out as a pretty clean car? Yeah, yeah, it was very clean. It was a North Carolina car. Um, and, you know, we just, we actually had one that unfortunately got damaged in transport that was already an M5 swap. So we just took everything and put it into this one. But we figured everybody loves that Electa edition that sold on Bring a Trailer for like 125 grand. And we were like, 
Let's make an E39. They never did it, but let's make like a tribute to it with an E39. No, I'm kidding. Uh, LS2, RX-8, also overdone. This car, I don't know if he has the suspension on right now. Like, well, some of it. Whoa, so this is, what is this gonna be? This is gonna be like a resto mod um, 240Z, so. Man. Jason, what, it's got a Rebello race engine in it. Yeah, it's gonna be about a 280 horse Rebello uh, engine. We're doing modern suspension, like, you know. Oh yeah, Fudopep. I have a bunch of Fudopep stuff on my car. Yeah, everything, we're gonna use MCS. Uh, dampers on it, um, you know, bigger brakes, everything, just modern undercarriage with like, it's gonna be a, what, what's the, I can't remember what it, what it's gonna be, a 3.1 or a 2.9 or something like that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a beast. Wow, my, my kind of build. You know, it's kind of interesting because it's like, if I took a picture in your area and it was black and white, you wouldn't be able to tell because everything is pretty much black and white anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. He likes color. Yeah. I mean, he still likes his white. Like, he taught me to like white cars, and then he was like, oh, I need some color in my life, and I stayed true to the game. No, but it's, it's kind of cool, like, really, the contrast yeah. between the two. And then that's kind of the fun father and son thing for me. Yeah, like, I, I, I've known you for, whatever, almost 10 years now, or yeah. a little over 10 years, uh, but I just met your dad, and I feel like we're already good friends. Yeah, he's just like me, except uh, worse habits, uh, likes colorful things, and uh, a little more proper. And he likes to take $8,000 cars and spend at least 80 on them. Okay, but like, if you look, like, look at the turbo, like, every single thing gets redone, all the brakes. Wow. And, like, this car's not done, as you can I see mean, all this. It, for, for having something like this in the Chicago area, I mean, no cars have rust here. We, we get rid of all the rust. Right. So. We, there's, there's, we're a rust-free <laughs> life. Um, it's an Alpha. There you go. No, it's a Berlina. Once again, just a stupid, crazy restoration, but oh. uh, Mike Besick motor, ITBs. Um, this car is going to be serious. <laughs> This car here is the same year, same color, same model that I learned to drive on in England. My dad had a 73. This is a 73. Obviously, the steering, steering wheel is on the other side. But... Why is this, this is all non standard. Yeah, we changed the size of the outside headlight, made it like a GTV in the front, changed the bumper. So. Any purists, if there are any Berlin purists, will be uh, dead against us. Um, well, thank you so much for having us at your garage. I was telling uh, your son that in his side of the garage, if I took a black and white picture, people wouldn't be able to tell yeah. that I took a black and white picture because all of his cars are black or white. It's true. Yeah, um, but over here, this side, of course, it's the workshop side, but it definitely speaks to me a lot more. I have an orange 1970-240Z, um, and just, I don't know, just the cars, just the, the attention to detail that you have on these, it just blows me away. It's really cool to see. Well, I've got two, two great guys that work here day by day, just helping, helping me with the projects. Jason has a very similar eye for detail. Uh, as I do, and then we've got Steve working doing fabrication. For example, Steve's working on, uh, we've got a, an 88 cab here with a G50 and it's got a 3.6 Vario Ram in it from a, from a later car. But normally when people do these um, 3.6 swaps into an earlier car, they just jam an exhaust system in there that doesn't really work. So these two guys, have, or mostly Steve, have actually, if you look here, they've actually fabricated an exhaust that's gonna be all handmade, that's gonna sound right, and it's gonna look absolutely right. This will get lightweight bumpers like the 79 that you saw next door. And this will, it, so it, it'll look professionally done. Obviously it needs tires and so on and so forth, but. Um, Why would you put that much effort into a car 
like this, but I guess that's the point is that's your hobby. Yeah. And that's fun. That's the fun aspect for you. It would bother me if it wasn't like that. It's like this car here, you know, we started and it seemed like we, we went down 15,000 rabbit holes, but when we're done, it's got a, how big's the Rebella motor in this car? 2.9, 2.9. So when we're done, we've got, you know, 310 horsepower at the wheels, 2.9 Rebello motor with all kinds of really, really trick suspension stuff in this, which Jason has designed. Um, yeah, I'd rather wait and, and take our time. And so this one took like four years or whatever, but. Right. I mean, it's going to sound amazing too. It'll the, sound amazing. The L series. It'll sound like that uh, 280ZX that's on the other side of the wall. Oh, I got to check that which, out. Which you, you're yeah. welcome to hear. So, uh, yeah, uh, your son walked me through the wagon, which yeah. honestly, I just can't believe it. Like all the M5 subframes, everything, the interior. It's so cool that you guys are doing that project. Um, and you, he probably told you that car's going to be all, how much of the interior did you show him? It's going to well, be we, we green leather, like green that. carpet. It's it, all electric. It looks like a pool table. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's, which is perfect. It's awesome. <laughs> Getting full BMW Motorsport brand. That's like that mustard. Right, what is that? Is just the, it's like the Phoenix yellow. Uh huh. This, these are the rear. Let me grab you up front. Oh my God, the thing is huge. What yeah, the? These are the brakes going on this. Wow. I love that. That is incredible. BMW performance. So this, this when it's done, we'll we'll sort of make a claim that it'll be, we think the best M5 wagon in the world. Uh, we don't know what we'll do with it. We'll, we'll drive the shit out of it for a while, but this, this old Bentley Turbo, you can see the underneath of this, there's been a fair amount of detail. I mean, like, just all of this stuff. Tell about like the motor, Dev. Well, this is a pretty good, it's kind of a good story, a sad story. We did all this work having these hubs made so that we could fit modern, uh, modern Bentley Turbo wheels on it, which, which I think is gonna look amazing and we've seen it on the ground and it does look amazing and then we're finally getting ready to put it put it back together and Jason's like well let me just make sure that do a compression test on it and it had one or two dead cylinders after all this after all that time I'm like oh my god this is a disaster it's gonna you know what have you done I was you know it was another he's had several near-death experiences all at my hands there was another time I was gonna kill him. And uh, he saved himself by finding the last new 1996 Bentley Turbo R motor, I think in the world. Was it a front it, Bentley or it was still a Bentley? It was, yes, they bought it at Flying Spares in the UK and it had been sitting on a shelf for 20 years. <laughs> and we bought it for 6,800 pounds, hmm. which that might sound like a lot of money, but for a brand new Bentley V8 turbo motor, we thought it was a bargain. Everyone, so Everyone thought it was gonna be about triple that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think for them, it's like found money, because it's like, well, who in the, in the yeah, world? Yeah, no one wanted it. it. Yeah, <laughs> for a long time, no one wanted that. You can tell it's been on that pallet for a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pallet is not having a nice time. Look at it. <laughs> it's sagging. Uh, it, it's not a light engine. No. So there's the original rear end off the GT3 RS. Oh, okay, wow. This is, this is, this is like a, a exotic car showroom now. You know, so uh, your son's showroom is like a hospital. And I come in here and this is like, what, like an exotic car dealer. Well, this was a, this was a function of my son getting first pick as to what side um, of the building. So the building's literally 50-50. And one side, this was the original side, the other side was built as a warehouse. So this side was literally all offices. Everything that you see here was all offices. And all that glass up there was the walls of all the offices. So we just demoed everything, um, saved all the glass, and we built that structure and then just reused all the glass and let the sizes of the pieces of glass dictate how big the openings would be. And then we built that wall and put a door in because we knew that we wanted to 
have a shop to do projects, you know, after, after I retire or whatever. Um, so we, train, we keep cars in here that, we, that are either in process or that I want to drive. Wait, what's the process to take any car out here though? Yeah, Dad, start with the Beetle. Well, the Beetle is my son's car, and I said to him one day about two, three weeks ago, I said, geez, Junior, that, that, that Beetle looks really cool. Why don't you, why don't I drive that home? I'd like to try, try that car out and just drive it home for a day. So he very nicely brought it around my side. The truck that I always have out there attached to the, <clears throat> to the low aluminum trailer was missing for whatever reason. So I jumped in it, backed up, checked the mirror, nothing in the mirror. And his beautiful beetle that's like brand new that I had for like five days, I, I backed it into my own trailer. Ouch. He's just gouged. Ouch. That's not supposed to be there. No. <laughs> so all the parts, all brand new parts are sitting here. It's going to the shop today to be, it'll be, we'll make it brand new. Really quickly, this is an early Factory 5 um, Cobra race car that's uh, getting a new crate motor rebuilt right now. What is it, a 427? 427, my bad. 427 crate motor. Uh, we left this down at Autobahn in the garage at the time, a couple of winters ago, and the heat went out, and we left water in it, and the block cracked. That's an E30 that I've had for a few years. It's got a uh, S52 in it. We redid the interior, back to the original interior. Um, really fun car, great runner. Nothing too crazy, just S52. So uh, before we move on further, so I already talked to your son about this, but t tell us what do, what do you actually do for work? Oh, I'm a car dealer by trade. I, um, I started out as a car salesman in Chicago when I was 20 years old. Ended up going to work for myself in 1990. Ended up being a new car dealer in 1992, Volkswagen dealer and Oldsmobile. And we grew the company into um, a few different stores then. And uh, Junior and his mom uh, operate two of the original Autobahn stores, um, Subaru and uh, Volkswagen down in Countryside. And we still operate uh, Evanston and Volvo in Oak Park. Well, that's awesome. Okay, it's a family business, I love that. Yeah. But like, this is really your passion. Yes. Cars, just, you're we... not just trying to get cars out of the door. You, no, you no, actually is, love cars. I've had this one. I bought this one from a dealership called The Stable in New Jersey about seven or eight years ago because it had 15,000 miles on it. It's got 17, 5, 18, you know, something like, just under 18,000. I thought you were going to say like 15,100. We're actually in the process of putting the uh, ITBs uh, and a um, five-speed Tremec in this car. It's already got a complete SNG suspension. And as you can see, we've already backdated the bumpers. Um, Steve right now is working on fabricating a grill, uh, which we're making from buying two XJ12 grills from early 70s cars. He's in there making the grill for that right now. So I want it to look like an early 70s car, but it's going to stay a 4.2 on ITBs with really underneath it looks the same as that Alpha or Jag. Um, I'm gonna keep it and drive it. It's, it's, not, it's not getting sold. Something you should know about both of our sides is all these cars are just about unsaleable. Yeah. Uh, whether we have triple of what they're worth into them or just nobody else wanted them. So. Yeah, no, who else wants a brown Jag that you own for triple retail? No one. Yeah. So that's all right. Except for, except, I don't for you. Care. <laughs> except for the two fishers. Yeah, <laughs> this is a. Um, this one might be worth some money. Um, this one might be worth more than we have in it. It's a 2008 F430 coupe that I ordered new from John Weinberger in 2006. Uh, it's a stick 430 coupe wow, in Verde Zeltweg. Um, so, in the U.S. market, this car is one. This car is one of one. Uh, it's got full Capristo um, headers, software, 
Again, it's not for sale, but it's this one's this one's saleable. <laughs> That's got to be. This has got to be so fun to drive with a gate. It's shift really, rate. really fun to drive. It's it's ridiculously fast as well. Awesome. Um, this Show is a. Uh, so that was that was AJ's girlfriend's grandpa's car yeah. that then I bought because AJ didn't want it, and then like I do, I found somebody else. Once I found it and drove it, I was like, well, I got to get rid of it now. And it wasn't white, so I found the perfect candidate. <laughs> Me. So I love that car. It's, we, we've done some really good mods to it. Uh, we're waiting for the right wheels for it. It's got KW coilovers, little lip on the front. What else have we done, Jason? Is, is this the uh, V8 version? Yeah, it's a V8. Okay. This is a right-hand drive 190 16 valve, uh, 2.5, so it's rare. It's the original Cosworth uh, 2.5. Needs work. It's going to end up going to England. Uh, ergo, the right-hand drive. But you got to check out the rear seats. It's the only reason this car's cool. It's got, well, there's other reasons, but I mean, honestly, look at this. It's wow. got like separate buckets. Oh, weird. I think it was like a Euro only thing because mm -hmm. I had a Cosworth back in the day and it didn't have this Evo two wheels. Nobody really cares. Uh, 911T. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Lancia? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to have a 911 motor at some point. This is another car that I purchased and then sold my father. 911T with the lightweight glass and stuff like that. Yeah, that car's pretty neato. This is a... Uh, so, GT3 RS. I don't know if you remember the Rawwell car, the Need for Speed car. Yeah. So when that car was all redone again, uh, I traded for this car. You're serious. Yeah, yeah. And what a good trade. Uh, that's what you think. <laughs> But it's a better trade it, now. When we got it, it looked like it was used in some type of war. Um, it was it was by far the roughest GT3 RS. And then, essentially, he rest I traded him once again because that's just what we do. And then he for the kinda, 79. Yeah, for the 79 sold. 911, we traded, and then he like restored it, restored it. So it didn't have carbon ceramics, even though it was supposed to. Uh, repainted the entire car. Underside was redone. Interiors redone, new tires, new mono balls, new header back exhaust. I mean, yeah. yeah this so now I want it back. It's so clean. Like, oh yeah, and then check it out. It's an RS. With a duck tail, right? Yeah, that is so clean. So took the de-winged. You know how like everybody's doing the, the the GT2 RSs and they're getting rid of the wings. It's just like one of the last ones that's manual, and that's just all, just analog yeah this is super low mile uh oh three or four oh three oh three c4s that's got kw coilovers um yeah we've done all uh, fab speed exhaust intake ipd plan uh it's got geometry correction on all the suspension for being lowered so this thing drives like a dream uh what's that numeric shift numeric shift numeric shift which you should put in your car was Get in that car and shift it. Yeah. Wait, was was this your car before? Mine? Fish? Yeah. What gave it away? <laughs> Actually, every white Porsche in here was mine. I, I remember <laughs> seeing this in your garage uh, a couple years back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, not that long ago. Oh, it wasn't no, this one? You probably start, uh, no, it, I had another 996 Turbo back then. Yeah. This car I bought probably a year ago. Uh, and yeah. then when I found the Turbo, I needed to make room and dump this off. But... You should shift that car. It's 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 amazing. Just Let me dry see. shift it. Let me see. Yeah, it's definitely worth trying that. Yeah. It's, it's I literally just put a like a GT3 shifter. Yeah, get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, that's legit. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. it's it. I put one in my turbo, and it's. I wasted my money. Yeah, I've never done that. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. This is probably the most special car here in terms of being a sleeper. It's got a completely perfect power built 3.8 with extreme heads. It's uh, 400 horsepower. Uh, it's got a complete 993 RS suspension. And it was all done to a 21,000 mile car that has never had any paintwork. 
So if you're gonna if you're gonna ruin one, you want to find a really nice one to ruin. I mean, I, that's kind of why I like your collection. You know, you you just get cars that you like. Yeah. You know, it's not like for anyone else. Not for. I never like red cars. Um, never like red Porsches, except on a 930. This is an 83 930 that I bought a number of years ago from a friend of mine who used to steal it from his friend's dad at 14 years old and drive it around at 150 miles an hour, for real. Uh, it's a 16,000 mile car. Um, I took it, completely restored it. Uh, the only non-standard thing about it is the wheels and an Andial intercooler, oh, which this, came with it. This is so awesome. It's, the, uh, the condition of the car underneath is the same. That's Miles, by the way. Hi. I love you. The condition of the car underneath is the same as it is on the top. It's brand new. This, this has got to be worth so much. Yeah. Yeah. That the way it sits. Wow. But just like everything, it's still worth less than what he has in it. Yes. <laughs> it's nice 675 Daytona that I used to do track days on. I'm curious about this. So I don't know what this is. This? I know it's a 280. I'll tell you what it is. It is a 1981 genuine uh, X Butch Lightsinger Trans Am car. So it has provenance. Uh, we're going to race it this year in vintage. Uh, we're obviously not starting as soon as we uh, thought we would based on a COVID and me getting a new knee. But the car is uh, it's the second race car that I've bought from the guy that built it. He's in the Pacific Northwest. His name is Jim Frula. He does beautiful work. He sold us a, a right hand drive a Bluebird Coupe a number of years ago, which we won tons of races with. And then we sold it to Adam Corolla. Adam Corolla. Oh. And he basically never drove it. And then he sold it for $8,000 more than, I, than he paid me for it. But I don't know uh, if you ever saw Just because he can. <laughs> that IMSA S14 I had for like. Uh, uh, like six days, but anyways, that that was a package deal with this car. The guy owned, guy owned that car and this car. It was a '93 S14 IMSA car, and it was a pretty funny story because I bought it, I sold it to him in one of our incredible trades, and then he sold it to the original owner's son. So it went from father to son to father to son in a weird trade. So uh, because you guys have dealerships or you guys manage dealerships it's so much easier for you guys to trade back and forth. Um, but is there like a system that happens? Because when you're trading, you're actually exchanging money and you're actually- Yeah, money and titles. Yeah, I mean, we're, in the, we're, we're licensed dealers in the state of Illinois. So unless we're doing something with absolutely personal funds, you've got to stick with the laws and transfer title and do everything in, in the correct way. But the best part is, is that it got, at one point during this whole like, COVID thing, it got so out of hand that his office manager like started yelling at both of us, like no more because it was so bad. Cause like I would have, I bought and sold a car before we even bought the car, like legally. It was, it was really messed up. Like there were so many We can start happening. this car for you if you want. Yeah. yeah if you guys don't start it. this car for yeah, this video. I'd love that. This is, a, this is also a Rebello engine. It's a 3.1 liter triple Weber 48s. This thing makes three 188 at the crank wow. and spins to almost 8,000 RPM. I love all of these uh, yeah, tech this, stickers. This car is run at the Monterey Torx. Oh, wow. Sounds amazing. I like it. So I look like for that it. car at Monterey this year. Larry is certainly at the full festival at uh, Road America. Wow. I love that it has like period correct. So many, like the tires are period correct. 
it looks like. Yo, they're like 13 inch wide BBS E88s too, that are four lug. Yeah, I mean, it's the jam. It's just a jam. It's just a jam, Larry. Oh, I jam. see that. Yeah. It is a jam. All right. What do we have? My here? second Italian car addiction, Lancia. It's a uh, 1.3 HF clone built in California. Really pretty much perfect. We did not build this car. We didn't do anything to it. All we did was buy it, driven it a few times, not enough. So this, of course, being a 1.3 is a V4. Whoa. Whereas something like that over there, the Flavia, is, will be a flat four, which is how Subaru got their original design for their cars. They just got Lancia's and copied them. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. It's, it's actually exactly how it happened. So that's a narrow angle V4, canted over to one side, obviously. 90 horsepower from a 1.3 stock. So these cars, as rally cars, made 140, 150 horsepower at the wheels all front wheel drive. One of the, win heavy. One of the winningest rally cars. <laughs> yeah, oh I mean, wait, so this is, here's a strut this is front wheel drive? Front wheel drive, yeah. yes. Yeah. Front so engine brakes really so hard, it will so do So the stopping. engine sits here and there's a transaxle right here. Basically it's just like a Porsche drivetrain would be, but flipped around. What the? Just like a Subaru drivetrain. What would be. were they thinking? It's so <laughs> front heavy, this it's thing, It's kind of huh? like me. Pretty front heavy. It's, it's actually, if you drive it, the, the handling is absolutely amazing. For a car that's, you know, 50. This car was designed in 19, it came out in 1963. Absolutely was ahead of everything in the whole world. It looks amazing. It looks brand new. Wow, the wood is so clean. I love it. I love it. Just beautiful. Here's one that we, that we did build. You remember the old garage that you went to, Greenwood? Uh, this car was put together there. We basically took the two liter out when it was brand new, got a 2.5 block from a CX-5, built a 13, point, 13 to one. 13 and a half to one compression. Got World Challenge uh, cams in it, uh, custom intake, fabbed intake, uh, triple adjustable JRZs. But the whole look of the car is pretty stock, uh, other than you know the light pod yeah. and stance and everything. So you know it's another sort of sleeper. But once you start it up, it's kind of not a sleeper it's anymore. Got real lumpy, thing. lumpy cams. I I know this is your doing rotor forms on here. Yeah, yeah. The, the fucking AutoZone light pod was not my doing. I'm not a, you know, like, this isn't my cup of tea, but when we took that to Autobahn, it was like the most fun car I've ever driven. Like, we had a 4C out, Alpha 4C at the same time, and I was like, you can drive that, I just want to drive this. Mm -hmm. it, it was a good car. Just top down with your buds, huh? Yeah, dude, with my homes, yeah, I put Miles in the car, and it's just me and him, just like the uh, Driving in the Rain movie, whatever. <laughs> it's not even my car, it's just really weird. Oh, <laughs> uh, last car, McLaren. 650S with, uh, show them how the doors go, they go like this. Yeah. Doors I just like think this. That like this. this is the best looking McLaren. Um, I know 720s are better and they're faster and I know the 600 LTs are better or whatever. 720 looks cooler. Um, to me, this is the best looking one. Uh, I think it's the high point, and I'm just keeping this one. Look, look, I'm a McLaren. Look, I'm a McLaren. <laughs> yeah, it's a concrete ping pong table, just in case you ever want to. Yeah, doors go like this. Have you ever seen uh, the movie or the show? What's the show? Valley? Silicon Valley. You got to cut that clip in. You want to know what I have? 
Uh, a fucking car whose doors open like this. Not like this. Not like this. Well, thank you so much for showing us your collection. Thank um, you for coming by. It's incredible. It's so cool that really, like, you guys are car guys, but you take it to, I guess, a different level that most people, most car guys. Um, well, we, tr we try to do this thing where if they don't get driven, they get sold. And if we show you our sheet of all the shit that we've traded back and forth with one, uh, one another, Oh yeah, let's um, check out that shit. There's a good yeah. number of those cars in, on it that have, been, that have been sold. Hey, you can come in here if you want. Oh, it's just like a... <laughs> I gotta see this. This is too funny. Oh, shout out to my boy, Doug. Huh? That's Miles. He's the best dog in the world. I see that. Also, the sweetest thing. Oh, so this is the sheep. That's the yeah, shoot. Yeah. That's the actual one. So then, like, some have been sold. This is where it goes. And then, like, the RX-8, it's, it, it was both, then it was thrice, which is another way to say three times. And now it's actually a four-timer. So this is the direction it's going. Senior yeah. to Junior. So right now, Senior has sold Junior 17, right. and Junior is only one ahead. He sold me 18. Oh, my God. You already... You already put the 964 cab on there. Fucking right. Oh my god. That was today. You told me you're buying it. That was today. Yeah. Literally 14 you told minutes me ago. You're buying it. I it's said, by the time, once it's on the sheet, it's real. Yeah, once right. you, you told me you're buying it. Yeah. It's on the fucking sheet. That's so right. I said, by the time this airs, that'll be my uh, 964. I guess. So. I think you were right. Yeah, you were right. right. No, he ran in here as quick as he could. <laughs> this is so funny to me. Like, GT3, Nissan 240 and 6. Yeah, like, that was that Insta car. Alright, I just think it's hilarious that green 240SX, junior to senior, sold. Yeah. Hilarious. That's some shit. Um, <laughs> this family feud, in a way. It's, they it's, get it's, ugly sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's really caused some uh, serious problems between office managers and... <laughs> Uh, well, we never have any problems. <laughs> yeah, we got one, but we'll talk about it off camera. <laughs> this guy never has any problems. Oh, that's Miles. He's... Miles. You're just the cutest thing. I think Miles says it's a wrap, so. Miles. <laughs> no, he doesn't care about you. He doesn't care. I'm going on my own. Yeah. Wow. What an incredible collection. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a problem, but, you know, keeps us out of trouble for the most part. Okay. Well, he's old now, so he doesn't really get in trouble, but for me, he keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> I think on that note, that's a wrap.